Welcome back. We're going to take a little sidestep for, for a moment. Before we continue on into diagonal lines, these linear equations in two variables, we're going to talk about vertical and horizontal lines. These are still linear equations, but they're in one variable, and that's interpreted, as far as graphing lines go, as vertical or horizontal lines. So what did you just learn from the last 30 seconds of me talking? If you have a linear equation in one variable, when you graph a line, it is going to be either vertical or horizontal. Our job right now is to figure out what gives you what. So let, let's look at that. So if we're going to talk about horizontal and vertical lines, here's what I need you to know. Every variable in a linear equation gives you an intercept on its respective axis. What that means is this. I didn't write this down, but what that means is this. If you have an x variable, you are going to have an x-intercept. If you have a y-variable, you are going to have a y-intercept. What if you don't have a y-variable? Then you don't have a y-intercept. What if you don't have an x-variable? Then you don't have an x-intercept. What that means is if you, if you walk through that with our, our equations we're about to be looking through, if you lack a y-variable, you're going to lack a y-intercept. Imagine something. Imagine a line that doesn't cross the y-axis. If you don't have a y-variable, you don't cross the y-axis. How would that line look? How would a line have to look to not cross the y-axis? Eh? Well, no, that's going to cross it somewhere. Eh? No, that's going to cross it somewhere too. How about that? No, that's clearly going to cross the y-axis somewhere. In order to not cross the y-axis, you would have to have a line that's, what's that key word? What's that word? That goes along but never touches. What's that one word that, of two lines that never intersect? That's the word of parallel. So if you're not going to cross the y-axis, you're going to have to be parallel to the y-axis. That's a perfectly vertical line. How about if you didn't have, and I'll, we'll, talk, we'll look at that in just a moment. I'm just trying to get you to, to think about it right now. What if you didn't have an x variable? that means that you wouldn't cross the x-axis. So if you don't have an x-variable, you are not crossing the x-axis. How would that look? Well, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do this. You'd have to have, be horizontal. So if you have no x-variable, you have to be parallel to the x-axis. You wouldn't ever cross it. That's how to interpret vertical and horizontal lines quickly. So let's check this out. Is it a linear equation? Yes, it is. How many variables? Well, there's only one. What variable do you have? So you're going to have an x-intercept. You have to have an x-intercept. What variable do you lack? So you can't have a y-intercept. Now, we can solve this still. It's pretty easy to solve. x is going to equal 4. You still have an x-variable. You're still going to have an x-intercept. Where? Well. Hopefully, it seems logical it's going to be at x equals 4. For what? Well, x-intercepts would have to be at 4, 0 for the y. And here's what this means. So here's 4. Here's our x variable saying you are going to have an x-intercept. It's got to be at 4. But you have no y variable. You're not going to have a y-intercept. So how can you go through that point, which it's got to be there. x has to equal 4. Um, and not go across the y. Well, it can't be this way. You're going to cross that way, or this way, or this way. It's got to be perfectly vertical. Now, here's why that works. If you are going through x equals 4, and the y value would be 0, if you don't have a y variable, well, then that tells you that y can be anything, and that would still be true. Anything. So x equals 4 says x is just always equal to 4 x is going to be 4, 0, and 4, 1, and 4, I don't give a crap. It's going to be x equals 4, no matter what y is. That's what it says. No matter what y is, x has to be 4. x is going to be 4, no matter what y is. That's a, that's a vertical line. So I want to put this back in like a 10 second recap. If you have a given variable, you have the, 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 x inter, the intercept of that variable. So if you have x variable, you have an x-intercept. If you don't have a variable, you don't have an intercept for that variable. So you have an x-intercept, but not a y. That has to be vertical, and the idea is x is 4, x is always held constant at 4, but the y can be anything I don't even care. x is going to be 4 for any y. That's what that says. 
Now, another kind of cool piece. Do you remember? I hope you do. I'm trying to make this all kind of cohesive for you. Do you remember when we talked about um, linear inequalities and we graphed them all on a number line, one number line, and it was two dimensional? If you go like this, that's basically what, what you're getting is that number line that's not changing according to another variable. So we're going to get a. That's a horrible line. I remember. Stupid line. Yeah, that's better. I always blame the lines when they don't come out straight. It's never me. So that, that's the interpretation of x equals 4. It is a vertical line. It doesn't have a y variable, so it doesn't have a y intercept. That's it. Now, what about the other ones? Can you solve them? Pretty easy to solve. Divide by negative 3, we get negative 3. Divide by negative 2, we get positive 6. <clears throat> Well, what variable do these have? Then they're going to have y-intercepts. What variable do they not have? Well, then they're not going to have x-intercepts. How could you draw a line that has a y-intercept of negative 3? And it does. It says y has to be at negative 3 always. Always at negative 3, no matter what x is. And that's why we don't get an x-intercept. This doesn't care about x. So, I don't care about you, man. I'm just going to be at negative 3 on the y forever. No matter what you say, I'm going to do what I want. I'm going to be constant. I'm not going to change according to what you say x. I'm going to be at y equals negative 3 forever. That's literally what this is telling you. It's saying because I don't have an x variable, I'm not going to have an x-intercept. Why is that? Well, because I'm holding the y to be constant always, no matter what x is. It's disregarding x. That's why x isn't even up there. It doesn't care what x thinks. It's just saying I'm always at the level of y equals negative 3. That lacks an x-intercept, that has a y-intercept, and it has to be horizontal. Yeah, that's a little better. The last one, same exact thing. Holding y constant at 6, disregarding what x says. You can't have an x-intercept doing that. It says y is always going to be 6. You can have a y-intercept for that variable of y, for sure, but you do not have an x-intercept. There is no x variable. It's disregarding the x. It doesn't care about the x. It's saying no matter what x is, I'm holding you constant at y equals 6. Every single point. Now, this is the transition to the next thing we're doing. Every single point that ends with a 6 has to be on this line. So 0, 6, 1, 6, 2, 6, negative 13, 6. All comma 6 has to be there. All of them. That's going to give us a way to go from points to an equation. This says all points that start with 4 have to be on this line. 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 0, 4, negative 13. All those points that start with 4 have to be on that line. That's how to go from equations that have one variable into a vertical or horizontal line. If you want to boil it down, if you have x equals a constant, like this one, you're going to have a vertical line. If you had y equals a constant like those two, you're going to have a horizontal line. And we just talked about y. Now, there's a couple things that we want to we want to go through after this. So, little teeny recap is uh, if you're missing a variable, you're missing an intercept. So keep it so that whatever variable you have, you have that intercept on that axis, and then you're not crossing the other one. That's going to create either a vertical or a horizontal line. Um, don't, don't just memorize this. I want you to get it. I really want you to understand it. Now, moving on. What if I were to ask you, create for me an equation Create for me an equation of the horizontal line. Let me spell horizontal. Now I'm all self-conscious about my spelling. Horizontal line through this point. I, I prefaced this a little while ago, about I don't know, a minute ago or so, when I said this is going to give us a way to find an equation from a point. If I ask you for a horizontal line, horizontal lines have to be y equals. 
those would have y axis and y intercepts, but not x intercepts. They have to be y equals. That would hold the y constant no matter what x says. That would say, and as well as referencing, that would say that I go through um, x comma whatever x comma the constant. That's what horizontal means. So horizontal lines, I know for sure if y equals constant gives me horizontal, horizontal has to give me y equals constant. So horizontal line, immediately I want you thinking y equals. Now, y equals what? Well, y equals whatever the y I gave you. I don't care what the x is. That's what horizontal lines do. Horizontal lines don't give a crap about the x. It only cares about the y. It says, what's the y? And you go, what's the x? I don't care. It's disregarding that. So if I say you're horizontal, you're always doing this no matter what x is. I don't care about the x. I could give you anything for the x, and you'd still, think about that, I give you anything for the x, and you'd still give me the same equation for that horizontal line. It'd be y equals the y. Yeah, 4. That, would, that line, by the way, that line would contain that point because that line contains all the points that have 4 as the y-coordinate. Just like this line contains all the points that have negative 3 as the y-coordinate. And this contains all the points that have y equals 6 as the coordinate. So horizontal lines, you're thinking y. How about a vertical line? through the point negative 2 comma 73 just because if we're thinking vertical lines if x equals constant gives you vertical vertical means x equals constant vertical means that you have an x intercept sure but you lack a y intercept that means that you should not be dealing with the y variable right now you should be dealing only with an x variable now what is it well what a vertical line means, what x equals means, is I'm disregarding the y. I don't care about what, what the y is. It says, I'm going to hold the x constant no matter what you say. Why? I don't care about that. Um, it's telling you that's vertical for whatever y you have. So it's going to be x equals negative 2 forever. Negative 2, 0. Negative 2, 5. Eventually, negative 2, comma, 73. No matter what, our vertical line is saying x equals negative 2 no matter what the y is. That's how we go from a point to an equation. You just basically look at the point, identify what variable you need. For vertical, you need x. For horizontal, you need y. And identify the coordinate that, that's given to you. <clears throat> you could clearly graph it, for sure. But you don't really need to, because it's telling you what it is. It says that's horizontal, and it's got to go through that point. You easily graph it. This is just finding the equation of that line. The last two things, very similar concept. We've got to talk about parallel and perpendicular a little bit. I kind of gave it away a bit when I said, if you have a vertical line, it's parallel to the y-axis. If you've got a vertical line, it's parallel to the y-axis. And if it's got a, a horizontal line, it's parallel to the x-axis. Well, we can use the same idea to find equations of lines parallel uh, to horizontal lines and perpendicular to horizontal or vertical lines. So let's let's talk about that for just a bit. How about I want the equation of a parallel line What am I telling you there? Let, let's think about x equals 7. Um, think in your head, or you can hold your hand out right now. Hold your hand out and think about what x equals 7 would look like. Would x equals 7 look like this? Would x equals 7 look like this? Which one? Horizontal or vertical? Well, we're, we're clearly vertical because x would always be 7 disregarding y. There's no y-intercept. You've got to be vertical. What would a line parallel to that look like? Eh? No, no. If, you have a ver if that's a vertical line, then parallel is also going to be a vertical line. So we know that. We, we know that we're still dealing with x is what I'm trying to get you to see. If I have something parallel to x equals, your line's still going to be x equals. Parallel lines keep the same, well, we'll talk about it later, keep the same slope. They have the same look. They just kind of shift over. So I want parallel to x equals 7. Right now, you should be thinking it's going to be x equals something. What's the something? I've got to give you a point. Parallel to x equals 7 and through, yeah, I know I'm missing through, but it's quicker, uh, through this. 
As soon as you do that, as soon as you understand that parallel to a vertical line is still a vertical line, then basically you're back to that problem, one of these problems. You know, okay, I, I want parallel to x equals 7, that's a vertical line, it's still going to be x, I just need to go through a different point, find your x-coordinate again, just like we did before. So if I'm going to be a, a vertical line through that point, then I'm saying I don't care about y, I only care about x, I'm doing this disregarding whatever the y value is. That's a, par that's a parallel line to x equals 7, just x equals negative 3. If you want the, ba the basic, the boiled down version Parallel means keep the same variable. Variable says take your coordinate of that variable. That's, that's as simple as I can make it. I, I hate making it that, I don't hate making it that simple. I hate making it that easy to just remember a, a, um, a method to do it. I'd rather you understand what's actually going on. I, I really encourage you to, to get that down. Parallel means vertical for the reasons we talked about. I'm oh, sorry, parallel to x means vertical for the reason we talked about. That's a, par that's a vertical line. Parallel means you're also getting a vertical line, but then going through a point says we're disregarding the other coordinate because we're disregarding that whole variable. We're only keeping the coordinate of the variable that's listed because that's all that we care about holding constant. How about perpendicular? It's kind of, kind of confusing when we think about all these different words. Perpendicular to y equals, oh, it says something right there, to y equals negative 1. i got to tell you what perpendicular means if I haven't already. Perpendicular means intersects at a right angle. In fact, that's how we even created the rectangular coordinate system or the xy plane or the Cartesian plane. We created it by intersecting two number lines, the x and the y, in a fashion so that they were perpendicular. Well, that should tell you something. The x-axis, the horizontal axis, is perpendicular to the y-axis, the vertical axis. That means this. All horizontal lines are perpendicular to vertical lines, and vice versa. All, all vertical lines are perpendicular to horizontals. So if I'm telling you I want a line that's perpendicular to y, y looks like this. Perpendicular to that horizontal line at y equals negative 1 would look like this, that's a vertical line. So if I say, find something perpendicular to horizontal, I want a vertical line. Should I keep the same variable like I did before? This is a big thought. Here I want a parallel, I'm keeping the same variable. Here I want perpendicular, different word, different concept. Should I keep the same variable? I can't. If horizontal's this way, perpendicular would be vertical, and we know that that's x. So right now, before I even finish the problem, I know I'm dealing with x's. So boil down, parallel, keep the variable. Perpendicular, switch the variable. I want perpendicular to y equals negative 1, but I want it through 7, 9, let's say. That's a horizontal line. This says I want a vertical line. That's a vertical line. Now I need to put it through the appropriate coordinate. I want a vertical line. Vertical lines only care about x's. So I'm going to keep it at 7. That's how to really um, grasp vertical and horizontal lines and the interplay between the two. I hope that you caught that. Pay special attention to parallel and perpendicular because that comes back at us a little bit later. Um, I hope it made sense. Right now we're, we're basically done with... Um, with the intercept method and horizontal and vertical lines, we're going to get into slope next. We're going to talk about what that is. We'll talk about the slope formula. We'll actually create it from scratch. It would be kind of fun. And then we'll use that to graph lines very quickly. I know we've already talked about that, but now we, we actually really go down, down, down deep into it. So I will see you for the next video. Have a great day.